and this is one of two parts for a GUI tutorial and that does stand for graphic user interface and the point of this is going to be to make it better for the player um, everything's going to be in one spot it's going to be right at the top it's going to look nice and it's going to be done with a background so that you can edit it any way you want make it look really nice make it change due to buttons or whatever uh, so we're just going to start off first of all we're going to need two backgrounds we're going to start off with one background that looks kind of earthy and uh, it's supposed to be seamless it's eh. and then we're going to start off with this now you want to make sure it's the width of the room and then you have to make a very important decision on how tall you want it to be i chose 64 pixels for easiness and uh, the numbers are going to be easier to work with but this is very important and you need to remember however you want it to be the entire width of the room now uh... The difficulty with this is, it kind of changed some stuff. As you can see, here's our old room. Uh, we start in the upper left. If we want to do this, uh, we're going to need to add the actual background one out. So this is our new room. Uh, I didn't actually put anything in it, because uh, I'll be going over mapping later. Uh, well, I already have a mapping tutorial, but I mean actually putting the game together. Uh, the first step is to start with a room that is exactly the screen size you want. So we've been going with 640 by 480, so that's what we're going to do. This is what, this, and then you want to make this room, first thing, to look exactly like you want the game to look. So this should be in the center, your GUI should be where you want it on the top. If you want it on the bottom, this isn't going to work that well because you're going to have to make the map first and put the GUI on the bottom right which is a pain in the ass because Game Maker doesn't really have a function like that unless you want it to follow a center and following a center is very unreliable and will also will often glitch um, so we're gonna put this at the top for simplicity and it still looks good uh, I put text up here as a start of some pictures just to give you a general idea anything you put in the background will look on the GUI so we're gonna put fuel and ore and then we're gonna make objects later in part two that will show you the variable of fuel and ore up here um, so we put the scrolling in the middle and then we added uh, a couple backgrounds the thing with the backgrounds is uh, we're not drawing a background color and background zero is our um, groundy thing and we did tile it horizontally and vertically and then on background one which will be above we, we have it as foreground image check that box that'll mean it's above everything everything goes under the GUI which is what we want so we put the GUI background and we do not tile horizontally or vertically our X and Y remains at zero however you want to fix that if you want to do it at the bottom right for a bottom GUI and the main problem comes with uh, this the views we need two views enable the use of views and then make two of them that are visible when the room starts now the first one you can leave everything default uh, width would be 640, height would be, you have to change, I'm sorry, you do have to change it, height is 64 on both the port on screen and view in room, and then you don't have to do object following, HSP and VSP are both a negative 1 and H border and V border 32, that's not a big problem, because this just has to be stationary, and we're going to have it at the top of the screen, it's going to be at 0 and that, uh, the other way, if you don't want, I'm sorry, what I meant before is, if you want a bottom GUI, you're going to have, and you want, and you want a top and bottom GUI. You're going to have to have a top GUI and one on the bottom right. We're going to have to layer them and change the port on screen. For instance, the port on screen, we could put this as um, whatever 480 minus it would be x equals zero, and then 480 minus 64, uh, or whatever your room height is minus 64, or however high your GUI is, and it'll be on the bottom. So if you just want one on the bottom, that's how you do a bottom GUI, but you know, normally in RTSs you only have a bottom one if you also have a top one. We're just going to do the top alone, however you can do a bottom one too, but you have to figure in a couple more things. The main thing you have to figure in is if this object goes up too high, it'll show the GUI and then it'll show the actual GUI in the room. Right now we have a special view that shows the GUI. If you want to show the GUI in the room, which you don't, this would move too high up. So take a you have to figure out how uh, high you want that um, and the way you do that is you take your how high you want the, in the entire screen is going to be in this case 480 then you minus you, you divide by 2 so 
let me get a calculator. In this case, we have 480. And what you do is you divide by 2, which gives us 240. And then we add however high the thing is, the GUI is. So this is 64 pixels high, so we get 304. Doesn't seem right. 480 divided by 2 equals plus 64. Huh. How did I do it last time? Now I need to remember. Anyway, if you're doing 480, it's 272. And X always remains the same. It's just half of the thing, half of the width. Um, basically, you need to find the center of your box. That's how I did it. Alright, so the way you do it is you take 480, or however, you take the height of your room, minus the GUI, divide it by 2, then plus the GUI, and then you get whatever your answer is. Um, so now what we're going to do is we need to change a little bit of code in scrolling, and we're going to add four new tests if self.y is less than 272 or whatever its starting coordinate is, that's why finding the starting coordinate is very important, uh, then you set it to that starting coordinate. In my case it says if self.y is less than 272 then self.y equals 272. Of course instead of any other curly brackets. Then we have if self.x is less than 320 in uh, semi the curly bracket, sorry, I can't talk today. Self.x equals 320, and then the end curly bracket. So the reason we came up with 320 is that's the width of the room. Just go by that. X is fine. Whatever the width of the room is, that's what that variable is going to be, or what that number is going to be. Then we have, this is where it gets a little fancy. If self.x is greater than room underscore height minus 272, once again, the same number you found up here, you're going to put down here. That's going to be if self.x is greater than room underscore height minus 272 open curly bracket self dot x equals room underscore height minus 272 and then end curly bracket then you have uh, another thing over here if self dot y is greater than room width minus 320 open curly bracket self dot y equals room width minus 320 so what this does is it takes the maximum and then minuses the number we want so it'll stay that distance away. The reason why is because it keeps going off the screen, which means it takes time for it to get to the other side to move the border. So now moving borders is instantaneous. So now it won't go off the screen. It'll stay in its boundaries and it'll move. And the GUI will stay on top of it because we set the number for how high it can go to, um, uh, what is it? Uh, it so it can't show the GUI. So I can move my mouse up and it won't move. I can move it left and it won't go. I can move it right and um, shit, it's not selected. Uh, wait, did I put the object in the thing? Alright, here we go. I clicked in the room and accidentally placed a scrolling up there which means because it was so high none of them could move so now that that's better let's see oh crap i just realized something i didn't make the room any bigger of course it's not gonna scroll all right so for this we're just gonna make it double the size one two i feel like an idiot um, 80, that's double the size width-wise and length-wise, 960, so it won't move a lot, but it'll move enough for everybody to see. And once we get the moving, now that you have the GUI, you can make buttons and whatnot, you can place them up there. So you can see we're moving around, we're moving instantaneously, and the GUI doesn't show up, but the GUI always stays on the bottom. So that's all we're doing now. Next time we're going to go over how to put some variables on your GUI, how to, um, uh, what else? How to put buttons on your GUI, and etc. So now, uh, that'll be next time, we'll get everything all set, and then after that we'll be doing menu systems, and then I was requested, I'll look into it, but uh, LAN, play, and multiplayer version of the RTS. So, thanks for watching, please rate, and please comment.